This is G484 Homework Booklet, Question 14. The first part is quite a typical question on Brownian motion, simply describing what you observe. There are sometimes two marks allocated to this question, so make sure you learn to include the key word random to describe the motion, but it's also important to include the idea that the random velocities are changing. Think back to doing the experiment for yourselves and what you saw down the microscope. You observed a zigzag motion of the smoke particles, so you saw that their speed and direction was in fact frequently changing, and yet there was no obvious visible reason. The next part of the question is now linking what you saw to what it reveals about molecules of a gas. It's important that you answer the question to respond to the exact wording of how it was asked. You have to make a link between what you see and what it reveals about the gas. There are three marks allocated here and four possible answers. Each one starts by saying something about the smoke particles and finishes by referring to the air molecules. You need to model this approach. So first of all, we have movement of the smoke particles and we attribute that to them being hit by the air molecules. So therefore the air molecules must also have random motion. Secondly, the smoke particles are continuously moving because the air molecules are continuously moving. Thirdly, the smoke particles must are larger and visible, but we conclude that they are being moved by invisible air molecules, which must therefore be much smaller. Finally, the small movements of the smoke particles are due to large numbers of air molecules hitting them from all sides. So each change of direction could be contributed to a different collision. Moving on, we now have a numerical part to the question. We are provided with molar masses for both hydrogen and oxygen. We're also told the mean speed of hydrogen molecules and that the temperature is constant. A key point here is that the kinetic energy of molecules within a gas is proportional to the absolute temperature. This leads us to realise that the mean kinetic energy of oxygen is the same as the mean kinetic energy of hydrogen. Having understood the physics, it becomes a simple situation where we have to substitute in values to solve the problem. So a half mv squared for oxygen equals a half mv squared for hydrogen, rearranging and substitution and a square root leading to the final answer.